Hola, mi compadres. Kevin having kind of a messy hair, don't care kind of a day. Um, speaking of that, I had a friend on Facebook ask me if I ever have a bad hair day. I guess because my hair is short and I spike it. Never looks like a bad hair day, but my secret is that if it's always sticking up, it always looks like I got out of bed, it's pretty, um, it's pretty uh, impervious to bad hair. But this one particularly, when the back sticks up further than the front, I guess that's considered the bad hair situation. So that's what's happening today. I'm drinking my coffee uh, out of another Starbucks mug. This was purchased in the uh, Philadelphia area where I was born and raised. And I purchased this when I went back home. There's an ad shot in here from my Nespresso machine, which I love. Um, it is this brand here, Cafecita de Cuba, which is the best espresso I've ever had in my life. And let me explain, I'm not much of a cigar smoker, but there is one particular brand that is the filet mignon of cigars, and it is Cohiba. Well, this right here smells and tastes just like a Cohiba. So anyway, uh, I encourage you to try it. It may be sold out. I think it was limited edition, but if you can get some, get some. All right, so we're going to get to it. Uh, yesterday, I thought this chapter was on money, but it is not. It is on poetry, and there are a handful here. Uh, bom, bom, bom. Oh, here we are. Number 56. Robert Graves said, There is no money in poetry, but then there is no poetry in money either. Fifty-seven, Voltaire, sixteen ninety-four to seventeen seventy-eight. One of my all-time favorite. Uh, pretty much any human in history. On Rousseau's Ode to Poetry, he says, "This poem will never reach its destination." Oh, I think I'm going to read it now and prove Voltaire wrong. Fifty-eight. Poet Louise Bogan, 1898 to 1970, on her love affair with poet Theodore, Theodore Rothke. I hope that one or two immortal lyrics will come out of all this tumbling around. You know, that's, that's kind of a cool thing, because um, there are a lot of immortal lyrics that come from tumbling around, so she says. 59. Charles McCabe once said, I write poetry not for publication, but merely to kill time. Airplanes are a good place to write poetry, and then firmly throw it away. My collected works are mostly on the vomit bags of Pan American and TWA. Thank you, Charles McCabe, for that. 60. The writing of more than 75 poems in any fiscal year should be punishable by a fine of $500. That was Ed Sanders. And I wonder, in today's inflated economy, that might be $501.36. Number 61 will be the last one today in the poetry section. And this is A.J. Liebling. He said, show me a poet and I will show you a shit. Probably the least layered and... Um, Oh, see, not intelligent, but it's a little, uh, little uh, lame. I'm just going to skip to the next one because I wanted to end on one that's actually really, really, really funny. And this is biologist P.B. Medawar. The human mind treats a new idea the way the body treats a strange protein. It rejects it. Anyway, love you all. Catch you tomorrow.